Hello, Uncle Jim here. Today I want to share with you my favorite trade so far this year. I'm going to actually go into detail on each trade and I'm going to share with you what really constitutes a good trade. So stay tuned. I think you're really going to enjoy what I have for you today. Okay, we've got a lot to cover, so let's go ahead and jump in. I typically like to give a quick market update. This week, as you guys know, it's been kind of a down week. Tuesday was a pretty rough day, and today we're slightly down, and yesterday I think it was kind of mixed. I th My guess is we're going to have this going on for the rest of the year. I think we're going to have a little bit of a roller coaster. Some weeks will be good, some weeks will be bad. I do think by the end of the year we will be up slightly compared to when we started the year. I don't think we're going to hit the lows that we hit last October. We may get near those lows, but I personally don't think we're going to get that low again. I do believe the Fed's going to change um, their direction. I believe they're going to do one more increase and then possibly two more, but I think probably just one more. Then they're going to sit steady for a while, maybe through October, November, and then they may actually become more dovish and start reducing rates. Now, I think they're going to take their sweet time to reduce them. I think they're going to do a quarter point and do it very slowly. Uh, part of the reason I think that is some information came out recently from, I think, ZipRecruiter that talks about the fact that the companies or a lot of companies are having layoffs and the employment, what we're seeing or the statistics we're seeing aren't completely accurate. I do think that we are heading into a recession and things are slowing down. Um, you know, so I, I, I do think at some point the Fed will back off. They will see the numbers that they're hoping to see. And some of the inflation we just can't get rid of unless we change our policies on um, fossil fuels, which I don't think is, is going to change, at least not during this administration, maybe a future administration. So I do, because of that, I do think the Fed is going to going to start changing their direction probably late in the year. So that's my two cents. And as always, it's probably only worth two cents. So let's jump into the main part of the video. So at the end of the video, I'm going to share with you 10 trades that I've done since the beginning of this year that are my favorite trades. And I'll talk about why, um, you know, what, what constitutes a good trade. And to me, a good trade is some one that fits your strategy, you know, that you have a defined good strategy. For me, it's having less risk, picking companies that are good companies that I want to own, and not taking undue burdens or risks out there, picking good, solid companies at a good, solid price that I like the company, and sticking to my guidelines, not running after profits or trying to make big, big bucks in short periods of time. And then also liquidity, you know, when you're selling options, you do need to be sure that there's enough strikes, there's enough expirations, there's enough premium that make it worth your while. So that's something I like to do. And it actually brings up an, another valid point is sometimes um, it's better just to trade in a select few number of stocks versus tons and tons of stocks. I think at the beginning, I, I probably was trading in too many. I was a little too diversified. And I think diversification can work against you when you're selling options. Um, also, timing and flexibility. You know, I do this part time. This is something I enjoy doing. I like to get on and off. I make it very passive. I typically I've fallen into kind of a routine. I, I kind of do one trade each day and it typically averages about $200. And that's what I like to do. So if I can do five of those a week, then it's a thousand a week, which translates into around 4,000 a month. And that's worked out quite well for me. Um, and also, you know, being able to do it in a passive way is has given me the ability to continue to do other stuff. You know, I still do software consulting, and I'm able to put in the hours I need to do to get to get that work done, and also you know be able to bill my clients um, a fair amount and not be too distracted by the market. I typically get on and then get off. Like today, this is Thursday, and I'm filming the video. I got on this morning, made a trade. I think I made $204 and I probably won't get back on again. I'll probably do one more trade, um, maybe tomorrow and then maybe one Monday, which will get me fairly close to 4,000 
for February, but I wouldn't be surprised if I don't get to 4,000 this month, mainly because there's fewer trading days in February, so shorter month. So, and then also what's really important is metrics, you know, how you measure what a good trade is. And that's what I'm going to talk about in the next part of the video. Having some metrics that you can measure for me is return, how much cash it's bringing in, um, how, you know, how many days till expiration, yearly return, return, you know, on investment and all those things we're going to go into in the next part of this video. So stay tuned. And as always, if you don't mind, um, please subscribe. Please hit that like button. You can also hit notifications. I'm still a small channel growing and, you know, any support I can get will, will be very helpful. And I also want to get the word out. I want people to understand this isn't rocket science. I'm by no means you know, smarter than the average person. I'm definitely the average person and most people can do this. This isn't isn't crazy. It's actually changed the way I invest. I I start with options. I well first I start with identifying the stocks I want. Then I use options to purchase them. And then once I own them I use options to earn extra income and, and double my dividends with cover calls. So um, and again, as always, I have details below for my memberships. If you're curious and want to take a look, um, I encourage you to take a look. It may be worth your while. So that being said, let's jump into the next part of the video where I share my best trade so far this year. So let's jump into that now. Okay, now I've opened up a new spreadsheet that I've titled Best Trades by Yearly ROI. And of course, these are trades just for 2023. These are trades I've made um, since January 1st. And these are listed 1 to 10, so they're 10 trades. They're by no means all the trades that I did uh, since January 1st, but these are the top 10 as I'm kind of defining them. And these these are based on the return on investment, yearly ROI for each trade. So let's go ahead and jump into them. So some of these will be the same symbols or companies, but the first one is William Sonoma. It's been one of my favorites. And I did a trade with it in Jan on January 2nd vertical put credit spread 95 85 were the two strikes so a 10 ten dollar spread it was uh right around a 19 delta with an expiration of 217 the current price at the time was 112 so it was uh, pretty far outside the money and i brought in 225 dollars in premium and that related to and let me explain how this is working. So that was over 100% return um, based on the premium and then the required margin. So this net premium, I actually have closed this position. And here you can see, let me move this over here. Here you can see I spent right here, this 36.62 is what I spent to close it. So that's why it's a little bit less. So this is the ROI for the original premium and then the ROI for the premium, um, you know, subtracting what it cost me to close it as well as the number of days that I actually had it open. And it was only open 28 days. It turned it into, what is that, 138% yearly ROI, which is, which is really good. Now, could I do this literally every 18 days? Probably not, but this is a good metric to use to measure how my trades are doing, you know, how they compare to other trades that I've also done. And so let's run down to the next one. So the next one was IWM, and this this is kind of a new type of trade for me. I've decided to give it a try. I'm using the Russell 2000. A lot of people will trade with QQQ or SPY. I decided I like IWM or the Russell 2000 ETF is a way to maybe do some selling of uh, vertical put credit spreads to earn some extra money. I don't really plan on owning IWM, so if it if it does turn into a loss, it's one trade I will have to close. And actually, I did close this trade for a really good profit. So again, it's uh, vertical put credit spread, two contracts, 160, 150 are the two strikes. Um, a 15 delta one thing that's really nice about 
working with the ETFs like IWM or QQQ or SPY is you have so many strikes, you have a lot of liquidity, a lot of expirations, and you can really get close to the delta you want to use. So I was able to get a, almost exactly a 15 delta, I believe. I think there was like one, maybe 0 0.1511 or something along those lines. It was expiring 217. Current price was 173. So you can see, again, it was very far outside the... Um, outside the money and I brought in originally $213 and again that's when it was open and that translated into over again over a hundred percent yearly ROI um, but just like what I mentioned with WSM I ended up closing it I spent twenty six fifty two to close it which caused me to actually have over a 200 um, yearly return on a 211 mainly because I only had it for 18 days I only held that contract for 18 days before I closed it so um, it's worked out quite well in that sense and you'll notice here I've actually done a lot of trades um, not a lot you know to kind of re relatively speaking um, I've done three or four just in IWM since the beginning of the year now my third highest or uh, best trades was Apple. I've done really well with Apple over the years. I probably have done eight, nine, ten different trades with Apple. This one originated back last year, but this was a roll. So it was 130, 120, and then I rolled it and used the same. Um, actually, I went a little bit down. I went to 125 and 115, and I believe this when I lowered it, it was really close to um, before the market really had reco recovered Apple was it went I believe it went in the money for a short period of time it went down to um, I think 123 or something along those lines so I was able to roll it and when it was really close to the money and had no problem rolling it I picked up hundred and sixty six dollars or is that yeah, $166.80. Now, I also closed this one. I spent 50 bucks closing it. Um, you can see that on the top in the equation. And then, so I, again, I had two different return on investment. So based on the, while it was open, it was like a 94% yearly return based on the expiration. And then when I actually closed it, um, I only had it open for 14 days, so it really that causes your return on investment to go up quite a bit. So, <clears throat> you know, so Apple, that's my only role with these different trades. Next is XLE, and this is an energy ETF. I've done really well with it, too. Um, it uh, strikes was 80, 80 and 70. Again, you'll notice I really like $10 spreads here every one of these were two contracts that's another thing I like to do I typically like to do two contracts I started with one and I've gone up to two and I don't plan to go beyond much beyond two I, I may do three on on occasion I will do more contracts if it's a something like Ford or an inexpensive stock I potentially will do more than two but for the most part I stick to to two and then uh, the current price was 89 so with the 80 and 70 it was again very far outside the money and then i brought in 185 this one is still open so i've got right at a 75 yeah 75 percent yearly roi based on the expiration the expiration is currently 217 um which i believe did i roll that one Oh, wait, I jumped up to the wrong one. Actually, the expiration is 3.30. So this one I still have. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with it. Next, I did another WSM, another William sonoma um, Opened it on 2.7. Two, two same strikes. You'll notice I end up using a lot of the same strikes. Uh, they were a little bit higher, but uh, William sonoma was a lot higher. You'll see here the current price back in the beginning of January was 112. It went all the way up to 132. Um, but I kept the strikes quite low. So this is literally outside the money of t by $22, which is quite a bit. And the delta was 18, almost 19 delta. So a little bit more risk on this one. But I'm pretty confident it's also, 
I'll be able to close it or it'll expire outside the money. Uh, I brought in quite a bit, 325, probably related to taking a little bit more risk. The more risk you take, the more premiums you can bring in. And again, this one is still open and it's a 70% ROI, yearly ROI. So again, I can't say enough about William Sonoma, good company, no debt, well managed. Um, and it seems to go within a fairly small range between one, 100 and 130. Um, so next is again IWM. So this is what my th second or third trade or second trade with IWM, the Russell 2000. And again, 165, 155. So um, most of my trades with with IWM has been in that that range. Again, very far outside the money. At, at that point, it was 181. So again, almost $16 outside the money. I believe they went up to 190. And maybe in the last day or two, it's dropped to 188. <clears throat> um, uh, 15 Delta, 15.7 again, the or yeah, 15.157 Delta. Uh, again, uh, you're able to find the deltas you like because there's so many expirations. It's so liquid. Here I picked up, and I must have closed this one too. So I picked up $190.40 in premium originally. Then I closed it for just shy of $40, $38.61. And then here you can see the different... Um, return on investments yearly ROI originally it was 65 with it open because it was going to expire in 58 days but with me closing it early I only had it for 14 days so again I had a much better return um, so let's keep moving on Apple again and you'll you'll notice a consistent these are some of my favorites. Again, Apple, another trade I did with Apple. This one I did just a couple days ago, a vertical put credit spread. And again, I like to use very similar strikes, 130, 120. I really like Apple at that price. I'd be more than happy to own Apple at 130. This was also, a, what is that, a 16 Delta, expiring in May 19th. So a little farther out, but I, I, again, would not be surprised if I can close this early. I believe it's already close to 40 or 50% profitable. And then current price, 150 So you can see very far outside the money, over $20 outside the money. And I brought in 225.40 in premium. And again, this one is still open. And it's over 53% yearly ROI. And the reason the return on investment is so much lower is again because of the the number of days it's 87 days here you can see it up here the calculations it's literally 87 days outside of um, expiration so i again i would not be surprised if i can close that i should be able to next is qualcomm this one again i did fairly recently it's a vertical put credit spread same scenario 110 100 another ten dollar spread um again very close to a 15 delta 15 24 is that 24 yeah 0.1524 expiring again may 19th and i like to go a little farther out from time to time so i like each trade i'm trying to earn around 200 i'm trying to do one trade a day and keep things real simple this is not the only thing i do i actually i'm a software developer and i've got i've got a deliverable next month that i've been working quite a bit on um so that way I'm able to keep it passive. I try to get around $200 each trade. And again, I try to get one a day if I can. Uh, February is going to be a little lower than other months probably because fewer trading days and then, you know, markets were closed Monday. But right now I think I'm around $3,300 for, for the month of February. So here, uh, QCOM or Qualcomm is 131. So you can see, again, I'm very far outside the money. Um, 229 so I brought in 229 some really good premium and it's also right around that same like 51.4 percent on a yearly return and I like I like Qualcomm too it's one I've trade traded fairly fairly often and done quite well with it next again is IWM another uh, Russell 2000 trade that I did and I've been doing two of these so I keep two open if I close one I open another one and so on and so on 
Um, I haven't rolled any yet. I may end up rolling one if if the numbers look good. But again, similar um, strikes, 165, 155, delta point 1667. And that's because the price of uh, IWM came down. It was right around 184. Um, so that, and you'll notice the next trade, I'll talk about it in a minute, the price had gone up. So <clears throat> I ended up doing a little bit higher strikes, but I brought in $203. And again, these aren't in a specific date order. They're just ranked by, and the return that they're ranked by is just, you know, without closing, it's just the original RI before I, I've closed any of them. So, and then, um, about a 48% yearly ROI. Um, and then I did another one, literally this one I did not long ago too. So it's again, two vertical credit spreads, 170, 160. So instead of 165, 155, a little bit higher, 170, 160. And that's because the price had come up to 191 for IWM. And it's, Brought in 197, so just shy of 200, but again, very, fairly close to 200, and it was 40, a 42% yearly return on investment, almost 43. And you'll notice it also its expiration is a little bit longer. And these are the two I think I have active currently: 519 and 421. So IWM and selling it just to bring in some extra cash has been working out fairly well for me. So here I just broke down, you know, my most frequent IWM. I had four trades, so it's it's one of my favorite trades now, if not my favorite trade. Apple is right up there along with it, and William Sonoma. Um, those three have I've done really well, and then uh, Qualcomm and XLE. I only had one trade, but again, they've they've worked out quite well, and I've done multiple trades with them. Now, the average delta that I did for these 10 trades was right around 17 deltas. So, and again, when you're working with puts, it's really negative 0.17, but I just like to refer to things in, in the positive sense. So it's to me, it's a 17 delta. When I communicate with my memberships, I typically talk about it in a positive light, meaning 17 delta. You know, I don't really worry about the negative side of it. The average days was 69 days. Um, and that's more related to the ones that have not been closed. So again, I all of these, that's the typical um, period, 69 days. So not quite three months, but more than two months, which is a little longer than what it used to be. And I think that's partially because of what's gone on with the market lately. I have noticed a little less premium with puts than typical. Now the total of these 10 trades were 2161 and the average is right around 216. So I've been able to do right around 216 on those those trades, which again is is my goal. Um, so that's it. Those those are the 10 trades that I did that have been the most profitable. Being able to measure them, um, having a strategy in place, uh, being sure. I don't take too much risk that, you know, to me, I prefer using IWM versus, and I talked about that earlier, SPY or QQQ. Doesn't mean I might not use those down the road, but right now IWM is working pretty well for me. Now you'll notice these are all vertical put credit spreads. I may do a separate sheet related to cover calls, but I the way I calculate or the return for cover calls are very different. So. Um, it almost looks like vertical put credit spreads or have a much higher ROI. And it, it, they do in a sense, but also cover calls sometimes can pay you more, um, but they have a lower ROI because I take the full value of the of the stock. So say you're, you're writing a cover call on a $6,000 stock. Well, I use that as the denominator, the 6,000. So it brings in 300 and it's a $6,000 stock. stock. I, I use that as is the um, basis on the return on investment. So um, so that's it. That's I'd be curious to hear what you guys, you know, what have been some of your best trades, what has worked out for you, worked against against you, you know, what are your 
least popular trades. I could probably do another video on some of the trades that have not worked out well for me. Um, but I wanted to share this. I wanted to kind of give you guys an idea that my new strategy of closing the trades was working and it seems to be working well. Um, so as always, please leave some comments. Let me know what you're doing that may be different than what I'm doing. And Plus, if I've made a mistake here or you find something that's not right or have a question, I've left something undone, please leave me a comment. So hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for spending the time watching and um, hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.